Hello everybody, thanks for joining to our new webinar focused on rat and mouse sperm analysis. During the session for today, we will just discuss about which are the best protocols for assessing sperm quality on these animals. And uh, also we will just talk about which are the parameters that are crucial for doing a good interpretation of results. Okay, you will see that with the CA system, uh, you can collect a lot of information, but it's very important just to uh, get a good understanding about the best way to get a good interpretation of results. And finally, we will just introduce some tips about uh, the sperm cryopreservation on that species, because uh, it's not always easy to reach a good result after freezing and thawing uh, this type of samples. Okay, so we will just start with the most popular analysis performed on that animals, that is the motility and concentration analysis. The first thing that we need to take in, into account is that the sperm features are very different depending on the animal that you are analyzing. Okay, so uh, in case of rodents, one of the most critical points to take in mind is just that we are not analyzing a fully mature sample. We are just analyzing a sperm sample that has been collected from the epididymis. Okay, therefore are partially immature sperm cells. This is why the extender that you are using for evaluating motility uh, features will be uh, very, very important for getting a good interpretation of results. So, in the case of house mouse, it is recommended to use a nutritive HAMS media, HAMS F10, that should be pre warm at 35 37 degrees uh, just to guarantee that uh, sperm features are similar to those that we found inside the female tract, okay, and therefore ensure a good motility of these sperm cells in the, in the counting chamber. Conversely, for rat, it is more recommend to use the DMIM uh, media. This is an Eagles modified uh, medium that also is nutritive and guarantee a good motility for that animal species. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, it is recommend to do the test at 35, 37 degrees. Okay, just to guarantee the good motility on these uh, sperm cells. Another important point to take in mind is just the depth of the counting chamber. Remember that the depth of the chamber will depend on the size of the sperm cell and also on the motility features. Therefore, in the case of house mouse, it is recommended to use 20 microns depth counting chambers. Meanwhile, for rat, it's better to work with deeper counting chambers, 100 microns depth chambers that will ensure a uh, free movement of these huge sperm cells all over the chamber. Uh, however, uh, it should be taken into account that there are some uh, research that uh, has proved the, 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 to, to measure the sperm motility of rat sperm on uh, 20 microns of counting chambers. And uh, it has revealed that it is also compatible to do that test with that chambers. Okay, this is why we encourage you just to uh, compare if there are so many differences between using one chamber or another on the sperm features and also publish it in order to help to other users to, uh, uh, to improve their, their analysis. Another point to take in mind it has the microscope settings because the microscope settings will be very different depending on the animal that you are trying to work with. So with mouse, it is better to work with a 10 times uh, objective and work in negative phase contrast. Meanwhile, for rat, due to, the, to its huge size, it's better to work with a four times uh, objective, including an intermediate lens of 0 0.7 that will reduce the original size observed at uh, 4x magnification. Okay. Also, the analysis will be performed in, in pseudo-negative phase contrast. Okay. So it will not be a fully negative uh, phase contrast analysis. 
and finally the frame rate very important uh, for uh, each sperm features in that case uh, the frame rate will depend on the velocity uh, of the sperm cells in the case of house mouse it is recommended to work at 50 frames per second okay conversely rat sperm could swim faster therefore we'll need to get the assessment at 100 frames per second here there is an example of the behavior of both rat and mouse sperm uh, cells uh, under uh, this analysis, under these uh, analysis settings with the SEA. Okay, here you can see that the behavior is different. Okay, and uh, it's very easy to analyze with the SEA. You can only uh, uh, need to capture 500 sperms or uh, five different fields in order to get realistic results. Okay, and therefore you can just collect a lot of information. The system will allow us to uh, obtain the specific concentration for the sample analyzed, but also which is the percentage of rapid progressive, medium progressive, non-progressive, immotile sperm cells to obtain the kinematical parameters for each animal. This is very important for describing if there is an effect of a chemical, of a toxic on the media because the velocity will decrease drastically when there is an effect, a deleterious effect of an environmental factor, of external factor, okay? And also the, 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 it will describe the potential fertiliz uh, fertilization ability for that animal. We are funding lots of publications that has revealed that higher velocities are related to higher competition between animals and a higher uh, fertilization rates. Okay, so you can link this information to the behavior uh, on, the, on the natural process of fertilization. On the same way that we are obtaining that information, also it's important to do a proper interpretation of the behavior of the sperm, just to combine the different parameters obtained by the system. That could be the velocity, the curvilinear velocity, the lateral movement of the head, the progressivity of the movement, in order to describe a specific behavior, a specific motility track that will define your animal. This is a parameter that is species specific, okay? Therefore, despite you are working with house mouse, you will find that depending of the genetic lineage, depending of the treatment, depending of the environment, you can find, you can describe different behaviors for your sperm samples, okay? So it's very important to uh, customize as much as possible or define what, what, uh, which are the expected values uh, for my animal concerning motility and concentration, okay, and published. This is why it's very important just to find some publications, to do some research about what is normal, what is abnormal on your specific animals. But when you are working with house mouse, uh, it's very common to find that uh, when you are doing the automatic detection, to find so many cytoplasmic droplets that could disturb the automatic analysis. Specifically, when these droplets are very uh, high and uh, um, are very close to the head, uh, the system could detect it as uh, uh, another head. Okay, therefore, describe. Uh, double tracks on the motility and concentration analysis. Okay, here you can see the heads, the droplets, okay, and that the system recognizes it as a two different structures. Okay, so how to figure it out? Uh, there are different methods that you can check in order to minimize the appearance of uh, the, the presence of these cytoplasmic droplets on the sample and just do uh, some settings to control on the system to minimize the detection, this double detection of the cytoplasmic droplets, okay? So for instance, uh, it's very important to check the methods for sample collection. 
Also, it's very important to adjust the minimum and the maximum areas from uh, the detection of the configuration and just play with advanced analysis. There is a tool that is incorporated in the analyze um, interface that will help you just to omit all these particles, all these debris from the background that could disturb the analysis, automatic analysis. Okay, so let's go point by point and just to try to, to, to solve these, these problems that could appear during automatic analysis. Okay, let's start for uh, the sample collection. Again, we have to think that the sample that we are analyzing is not fully mature. It is obtained from the uh, dissection of the epididymis. Specifically, uh, it is recommended in publications to uh, dissect the cauda epididymis, this is a small region that we found here. Okay, but uh, we have to think that uh, during the epididymal maturation, this sperm also is triggering some uh, morphological uh, modifications that could be the uh, deletion of the cytoplasmic droplet, okay? This cytoplasmic droplet is a residual of the cytoplasm that was present in the immature spermatids, and that is deleted, is moved through the, the, the midpiece and through the tail in order to be deleted from the mature sperm cell, the ejaculate sperm cells. So this is a typical organelle that is found in the epididymis, okay? But exclusively here, not on mature sperm cells. This is why it's important to control the dissection process of the cauda epididymis. Because when you are dissecting on this part of the cauda epididymis, the size of these droplets will be smaller. Also, the percentage of cells without droplets will be higher than if you are collecting samples from another areas from the um, epididymis. Okay, so it's very important just to take in mind that in this region, this is a small region, the probability to find or to collect droplets will be lower than if you are collecting other areas within the epididymis. Also, it's important just to collect samples from the different duct because here the sperms will be practically mature, okay? Therefore, uh, it will be uh, just difficult to find a high percentage of big cytoplasmic droplets, specifically these proximal and medial cytoplasmic droplets that could difficult a lot the automatic analysis. Okay. If after checking this procedure, you're still observing lots of cytoplasmic droplets, you should take into account that uh, this presence of cytoplasmic droplets on ejaculate or partially mature sperm cells could be indicative from defective spermiogenesis on that animals. Therefore, this defective spermiogenesis could be related to a stress of the animal, environmental factors that are disturbing the proper spermaturation all over the, the testes and the epididymis. Also, it could indicate a um, immaturity uh, of this animal. Normally, when we are working with very young animals, uh, it's very frequent to find high, uh, very, very big cytoplasmic droplets, okay? So it's important to take in mind that or to use that information as an indicative of that there is something wrong with your animal, okay? So once you are starting the analysis, the first thing that you need to play with is just the area from the uh, configuration settings. It is important to take in mind that if everything is working properly, the size of the cytoplasmic droplet should be smaller than the area occupied by the sperm head, okay? Likewise, when you are dissecting, it's very common the release of uh, epithelial cells or uh, particles, debris, residuals from the tissue all over the background, okay? These particles tend to be bigger than the sperm heads. So to omit this 
smaller or bigger uh, particles compared to the sperm head, you can just play with this minimum and maximum areas for detection and reduce this range, this detection range, to these settings that are very close to the sperm head. Hence, the system will not analyze all these, all these particles that are bigger or that are smaller than the rates than the range that you are specifying here in the costume in the in the configuration settings okay if these two procedures are not working properly uh, there is also the possibility to play with advanced analysis this advanced analysis allows to modify the threshold of the field that you are observing at the microscope in order to omit from the background all these particles or these droplets that could be detected as sperm heads. Okay, so here I have prepared you a small tutorial uh, that will show you how to activate it, how to play uh, with it. So here, this is a human sample, but the procedure is the same for animals. Here it is activated, the advanced analysis. And when you are playing with the threshold, um, the image that you are obtaining is pretty different. And you can remove from the background all these particles that are not sperm heads. Hence, when you analyze, the number of sperm heads analyzed will be different. In that case, we have captured more than 100 particles as a sperm heads, but after adjusting this filter, you can just capture again and just obtain a lower number of sperm uh, heads depth. So just comparing the uh, original image with that obtained after applying this uh, advanced analysis, you can just uh, obtain an accurate measurement of the sperm concentration of the sperm motility on uh, these, uh, these captures. Now we will move to another analysis that is commonly used in rodents, that is the vitality analysis. This test is crucial for evaluating the viability of the membranes after thawing samples, after submitting the animals to specific treatment, after uh, for evaluating the toxicity of any external agent, okay, because the membranes of the rodents are very sensitive to external factors and could be used as a good indicator of uh, external factors that are uh, affecting on the viability on these sperm cells. This test is normally performed by using fluorescence. This is important to take in mind that the woven uh, membranes are very permeable to the um, eosin. Therefore, the conventional eosin nigrosin methods used for evaluating sperm viability uh, cannot be applied because all the sperm cells are stained as dead sperm cells. Therefore, it's better to use fluorescence method in which following an optimal dilution ratio, you can uh, accurately label these sperms with the membranes that are intact, that are working properly. So these are the sperm heads that are stained in blue. From these cells that are damaged, uh, that are stained in red. Okay, so this is a very accurate way to evaluate the integrity of the membranes. Um, this test can be easily performed. Yes, capturing 100 or 200 sperms is enough. Uh, you can do the analysis by using the 10x objective or the 20x objective, depending on the uh, magnification that you want to, to use. And the unique critical point you need to follow is just to reach an optimal concentration for minimizing the overlapping of cells. Okay, so just diluting the sample to a final concentration from about 20, 30, 50 million per milliliter could be work, uh, could work perfectly uh, for doing that test. When you are working with higher concentrations, 
there is a high percentage of sperms overlap, therefore the analysis uh, should be manually correct. On the same way that the vitality analysis can provide you very valuable information about the effect of some external uh, factors on your uh, the sensibility of uh, sperms on the these membranes, morphology analysis will also provide from very valuable information concerning the fertilization ability of uh, on on these uh, on your animals and also the strategies followed by your species to fertilize the oocyte. Just a uh, refresh that the general, the, the overall sperm morphology in rodents is just a hook-shaped sperm head that is composed by too many uh, structures, one acrosomal area and one postacrosomal area. This area could be functionally distinguished in different regions. It could be the anterior acrosome that uh, uh, also is known as acrosomal vesicle that contains all these uh, enzymes, all these proteins, uh, uh, proteolytic uh, enzymes that will break the uh, zona pellucida layer that is uh, protecting the oocyte, okay, will allow the digestion of this layer and the penetration. There is also another region that is called the equatorial segment here, shown in yellow, that entails the specific recognition of the olema. Therefore, it will allow the fusion of the uh, sperm with the oocyte after penetrating these layers that are protecting the, the oocyte. But internally, the uh, nucleus is protected by a full uh, cytoskeletic uh, layer, uh, the postacrosomal sheath, that will uh, provide from a huge stability during uh, sperm penetration over the oocyte. Okay, it's very important to preserve the integrity of the nucleus during acrosome reaction, during membrane fusions. Okay, so this sheath will help the, the, the sperm nucleus to preserve its integrity during fertilization process. Likewise, it is possible to distinguish uh, two areas that are the ventral spores and the perforatorium, that are two areas that are uh, linked, that have been suggested to be linked uh, to the uh, fertilization strategy. Okay, we have to think that the sperm morphology all over species found in murids. Uh, is very variable and depends on the uh, fertilization strategy followed by uh, each animal. So normally these sperms that contain these structures are uh, normally uh, found in these species that uh, are more resistant uh, to uh, anchor to the female tract and wait until the oocyte is released. Okay, so uh, these uh, structures could be related to the synchronization with the oocyte release and to the ability to mechanically penetrate through the different layers that are protecting the, the oocyte. Okay, so these uh, structures are very important to take in mind for getting a good interpretation of the morphology results because uh, it's very common to find uh, some. Uh, profile of abnormalities that are repeated all over the rodents. Okay, for instance, both in, in rat or in mouse, it's very common to find uh, abnormalities that are concerning the development of the hook. Also, it's very common to find these uh, spoon-shaped heads, bendings on the heads or tails coiled that will trigger some problems during. Um, gamete fertilization, okay? So all these uh, sperm heads that are abnormal will not be able to penetrate, they will not be able to reach, will not be able to penetrate the oocyte. And therefore the fertilization success for these animals will be lower than other that contain a lower percentage of abnormalities, okay? This is why it's very important to do an accurate morphological analysis. With the SCA system, uh, we have the advantage that measure the general 
morph uh, the, the general morphological uh, features on the sperm head that like could be the width the area the perimeter of the head but also it pays a special attention on the development on the structure of the hook of uh, these uh, these sperm structures therefore uh, the system also measures the length of the arc of the of the hook the cord the linearity okay that uh, provides a percentage of curvature of the hooks the angle of the hooks okay that could be also related to the strategy for fertilizing the the oocyte and the and also is related to the poten the, the potential uh, on the on the competition between males that are um, that are mating with the same female so with that module you can obtain the percentage of normal abnormal sperm cells but also to obtain uh, the frequency of the uh, abnormalities register this is very important for detecting uh, specific ab abnormalities related to the nucleus integrity for instance, macrocephalias, microcephalias are very linked to the packaging process of the DNA inside the nucleus. Therefore, these, uh, these genetic lines with abnormal chromatin structure, with an abnormal replacing of the histones by protamines, or with uh, Robertsonian translocations, will be affected. You will find a high percentage of these abnormalities. So it's important to evaluate which is the frequency of each abnormality in order to describe which could be the origin from my abnormality. Likewise, it is important to evaluate which are the morphometrical values for my animals. These are close to the expected values. These are far from my normality values, okay? And just to weight the level of damage inside the sperm sample, you can measure by using the teratososperm index, multiple abnormality index, and the formity index that are automatically provided by the system, okay? And weight if uh, the effect of one uh, chemical is higher on a different concentration, you can just evaluate it by comparing this teratosospermy index. Hence, it's very important to customize your analysis setting to your specific animal, to your specific genetic lineage, because uh, each animal, its genetic lineage, could show a different uh, morphotype of a uh, normal morphotype. Okay, so it's very important before doing any analysis first to do a, a, um, a, a some research on that publications concerning your specific animal, your specific breed, your specific species, and introduce that normality settings in your system configuration in order to get realistic uh, results and get optimal conclusions. Okay, this is an example of a publication performed by Professor Van der Horst, in which has uh, defined some differences or some parameters that can be found in sprawdowly um, rats or in different types of uh, wister rats. Okay, so it's important to take in mind what is expected to find, what are you finding in your animals. Finally, it is also important to take in mind that especially when you are working on a research lab, which you are doing IVF or ICSIS, or maybe when you are evaluating the effect of a chemical of a toxical, uh, you are doing some toxicological test on the sperm uh, samples, it is very important to evaluate the functionality, the biological functionality of these sperm cells. You can easily do it by using this complementary test, like could be the acosome reaction, which allows to evaluate the sensitivity of acrosomes to react when are bind to the zona pellucida. Okay, so by by using that test, you can detect uh, if sperms are prematurely reacted, if are not sensitive to react or uh, which is the behavior that you found after freezing compared to before freezing 
okay? So it could entail very valuable information about the biological uh, functionality of these membranes on different conditions. Also, it's very important not forgetting the integrity of the DNA, okay? Especially if you are doing ICSIS or IVF with that animals because the DNA fragmentation could trigger lots of problems, lots of embryo miscarriages uh, during embryo development, okay? Not maybe, not during fertilization, but just during the, the following processes. So it's very important to do a, a previous screening and evaluate the level of damage on your sperm sample. Just to finish with that webinar, I would like to introduce some tips about the cryopreservation on that animals, because uh, this is a, a point that uh, you will find a huge difference on the results obtained between publication. Okay, this fact is due to the uh, that the tolerance of each animal to the cryopreservation uh, process could depend on different variables, like could be the genetic background, the protocol of cryopreservation followed, or just on the type or quality of the cryoprotectant used, okay? This is why it's very important to understand what is happening uh, during cryopreservation and uh, what can we do just to minimize these uh, processes that are happening during uh, the freezing and flowing process, okay? So just, uh, you can just imagine that this is one sperm cell that you want to freeze. Once uh, you want to freeze, you can add some uh, specific extender for cryopreservation with a pre cryopreservation agent. So immediately when you are freezing, there is a natural behavior on the sperm cells that consists in the uh, losing this water content from the sperm cells, okay? That is followed by a shrinkage of the sperm head, okay? This process allows the penetration of the cryoprotectant agent. We have to think that most of cryopreservation uh, extenders have a different viscosity, have a different, uh, different features, therefore tend to penetrate on a different time scale than the uh, water, okay? So this spring cut is normally followed by a swelling processes that uh, in which the sperm cell uh, reach up osmotical balance uh, during this process, okay? However, depending on the genetic background, depending on the protocol, depending on the type or quality of cryopreservant, when you are throwing that sample, this swelling could involve an irreversible membrane fusion, okay? Especially between the meat piece and the tail. Therefore, when you are uh, throwing the sample and you are removing, replacing this cryopreservation agent, uh, it's very common to found a high percentage of cells with coiled tails, with uh, heads bended to the meat piece, okay? And this process is related to this uh, uh, membrane fusion during the freezing and thawing process, okay? This is why some publications have uh, worked so hard on these points, on these osmotical changes during uh, pres uh, cryopreservation, and has established some tricks for minimizing this deleterious effect on the quality of the chocolates after thawing the samples. So in the case of house mouse, it is recommend just to dilute immediately the sample with heterotubal media, okay? And then after this, previous dilution, just replace fully this uh, cryoprotectant extender, extender by a heterotubal fluid. Conversely, in rats, it is recommend first do a pre-incubation of the sample for getting a fully thawing of the sample, okay? And then just dilute the straw 
with a terotubal uh, medium, but using a swim up method. Okay, so by using the swim up, it allows to uh, to get a, a dilution, a very very slow dilution that will minimize these osmotic changes. Okay, during uh, the replacement of the cryoprotectant, and then uh, you can just replace all the quantity or all, all the the full volume of uh, cryopreservant with heterotubal fluid, okay, with a conventional method, just centrifuging the, the sample and resuspending the pellet, okay? So uh, just to get more information about these procedures, you will find it in um, these different publications that I have uh, introduced here, okay? Here you will find most of the information that we, uh, we have used for preparing that presentation and uh, all these protocols or these procedures that you can follow for, uh, for improving your uh, procedures in your lab, okay? So thank you so much. Thanks for your patience. And now is your time for asking your questions in the chat. And uh, thank you for, for all.